The Extended Focused Assessment with Sonography and Trauma Exam, or EFAST for short, is a rapid assessment for life-threatening traumatic conditions by looking for fluid in the pericardial, peritoneal, and pleural spaces. We're going to start with a subxiphoid view of the heart, followed by a right upper quadrant scan, left upper quadrant scan, and finally the pelvic scan. Here's the image we want to achieve. In this image, you can see the liver and all four chambers of the heart. First, we need to select the probe. Most practitioners perform FAST exams using the curved array probe, but you can also use the phased array probe. Start by holding the probe like a computer mouse and make sure you have oriented your probe correctly with the probe indicator pointing to the patient's right. For this exam, you'll be viewing structures that are deep within the body, so start with your initial settings on high. Place the transducer into the subxiphoid space in the transverse plane. Ensure that there is direct contact between the xiphoid process and the probe. Apply gentle compression towards the spine, which allows the ultrasound beam to pass below the sternum. The probe should be as parallel to the floor as possible. Aim the probe through the chest and towards the left axilla and the heart will come into view. Adjust as necessary until all four cardiac chambers are visible. Adjust the depth to ensure that the beam penetrates beyond the deep borders of the heart, and then perform a sweep through the entire heart. Starting with visualization of the interventricular septum and move right up to the cardiac apex. In these clips, we can see fluid in the pericardial space. It collects in the most dependent portion, which corresponds to the top of the screen. Once you've completed the subxiphoid scan, the next step is to scan the right upper quadrant. Here's an image we want to achieve. In this image, you can see the hepatorenal interface, liver, and kidney. Hold the probe like this and make sure the probe indicator points towards the patient's head. Start with your probe hand touching the bed in the area of the right flank. Locate the area of interest, the hepatorenal interface. This will often be right at your starting position. If you don't see it, try moving the probe upwards towards the ceiling. Visualize the entire kidney and hepatorenal interface by performing a thorough sweep. It may not be possible to visualize this area in one view due to rib shadows. You may need to sweep through the entire kidney and interface, and then slide the probe down caudally and repeat the sweep through the lower kidney and interface. You can also rotate the ultrasound beam between the ribs to eliminate the rib shadow. The important thing is to ensure that you have visualized the entire area of interest with your sweep. Make sure you view the entire area around the kidney as well, as small amounts of fluid may collect nearby. This is especially true of the space between the liver and diaphragm, so view this area carefully. Only if you've generated a good quality image with a complete sweep can you confirm the presence or absence of free fluid. Before we move on from the right upper quadrant, we can quickly examine the right chest for the presence of free fluid as well. To do this, slide the probe cephalad and identify the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a bright white or echogenic line that moves with inspiration. The air in normal lungs scatters the ultrasound beams, creating an artifact that resembles the liver's reflection. Free fluid in the chest will collect between the lung and the diaphragm and be apparent as a black area filling the diaphragmatic recess. Here's an example of free fluid in the right upper quadrant tracking up into the hepatorenal interface. In this clip, we can see fluid in the right thorax above the diaphragm, interfaced with aerated lung with continuation of the spine above the diaphragm. Next, we'll move on to the left upper quadrant scan. This is an image of what we are trying to achieve. In this image, you can see the splenorenal interface and posterior portion of the diaphragm. Examining the left upper quadrant is similar to that of the right side. The probe marker once again points towards the patient's head. In this case, our area of interest, the splenorenal interface, is slightly more cephalad and often more posterior than on the right side. Sweep the entire kidney and interface. It's especially important on the left upper quadrant scan to visualize and sweep the area above the spleen, as free fluid also commonly collects here. Confirm the presence or absence of free fluid. Slide your probe cephalad to visualize the diaphragm and look above the diaphragm for signs of fluid in the thorax. In this clip, we can see fluid in the left thorax above the diaphragm interfaced against aerated lung with continuation of the spine above the diaphragm. Lastly, we finish the exam by scanning the pelvis for free fluid. This is what we are trying to achieve.
In this image, you can see the bladder, a well-defined fluid structure. Start by holding the probe in a transverse orientation with the marker towards patient right, and place it in the suprapubic area. Locate the bladder by angling your probe towards the coccyx. The bladder, if full, will be obvious as a black or anechoic area with defined edges. Sweep through the bladder, looking for free fluid in the pelvis. Free fluid in this area will collect behind the bladder and will have an irregular shape. Here's an example of free fluid in a female patient. Notice the bladder is highest in the screen and the fluid collects posterior to the uterus deep in the screen. Don't forget your clinical judgment. An unstable trauma patient is still an unstable trauma patient even if the FAST is negative. The FAST exam is a wonderful tool for patient care, but be aware of the limitations of this exam. FAST is not 100% sensitive for free fluid in the abdomen. You are unlikely to detect amounts of fluid less than 300 to 500 cc's. You can improve your sensitivity to detect fluid by waiting some time to pass and then repeating the scan. Finding fluid on the scan does not tell you either what the fluid is. Fluid from intra-abdominal hemorrhage, ascites, dialysate, or a ruptured ovarian cyst will all look the same. You need to put your findings into the clinical context. Beware of false positives, which can arise from perinephric fat or fluid within the bowel lumen. False negative exams are particularly problematic for your patient. Some life-threatening injuries commonly present with a negative FAST. The FAST scan does not assess the retroperitoneum, and as a result, you will not see retroperitoneal bleeding. You will be unable to detect the retroperitoneal bleed of an abdominal aortic aneurysm, a ruptured kidney, or that secondary to an unstable pelvic fracture. Injuries to bowel often do not present with a positive FAST, but can result in life-threatening peritonitis. Remember that bowel adhesions may prevent the normal flow of intra-abdominal fluid into the right and left-sided gutters. Never be overly confident about a negative FAST in a patient with previous abdominal surgery. Clotted blood is echogenic and will be difficult to see. FAST is less helpful in delayed presentations of trauma.